Jeffrey, thanks for joining us on BBC News. Your company has joined with 19 others of the leading tech firms in the world to agree to work to clamp down on deceptive generative AI, a grand ambition. How big a threat do you see it posing to all of the elections that are taking place around the world this year? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So we see it as a very big threat is the short of it. Um, you know, this is about mitigating the most obvious downside risk to the most exciting and transformative technology of our generation. And the Tech Accord comes at an extremely important time as billions of people head to the polls this year and at a time when the security threat of deceptive media has simply never been higher. Given how believable some of this material looks and sounds, how are you actually going to achieve that? So we really believe in a fundamental approach of transparency in where digital content originates from and the history of that digital content over time. And Trupic has been uh, an active member and participant building an open standard called the C2PA, which is a technical mechanism for being able to establish that origin and transparency in all digital content. And it's something that all of the companies that are involved in the Tech Accord can opt into implementing to create a more transparent ecosystem. But who decides whether something is maybe designed as a piece of comedy, it's a piece of satire, it's putting some well-known figure saying something funny for the purposes of jokes that's been around since the internet was invented. Who decides what, what is okay like that and what is potentially damaging? That's, that's a great question. It's really for the consumer to decide. The consumer ultimately makes that decision. What we believe is that the consumer should have access to information on simply where content originated from, did it come from an AI system? Was it created by a computer or was it created by a human? And the mechanisms that we have in place and that open specifications like the C2PA enable is just information about where content is originating from. So the consumers ultimately left to make their own decisions on what content to trust and whether it's for the purposes of satire or otherwise, um, that's not for tech companies to decide. And how much do you need national governments to assist you with this? I mean, the EU's AI Act is almost law, but there's nothing remotely comparable in the US, for example. Look, I think that the legislation is going to be impactful here. But what I, I think we are seeing right now is that legislation can't keep up with the pace of AI, which is why this tech accord is so important. You have the largest companies in the world opting in to take this action and to be responsible with their use of AI without the need for legislation to, to ultimately come in and enforce that. So I think this is really a critical step forward for the ecosystem that can have impact in 2024, which I simply just don't think legislation will have. The Tech Accord is focusing on elections specifically, but what about deceptive AI in other strands? Misrepresentation of businesses, reputational attacks on public figures, or even image misuse on those who aren't politicians, but who are well known? Look, I think that's the right question to ask. In uh, relation to the Tech Accord, I think it's very good that the Tech Accord is focused, right? I think that gives us the best chance to really understand the scope of the problem and be able to create momentum in 2024. But the challenge of deceptive media extends far beyond just political uh, challenges and, and, and uh, deception that, that we're worried about in 2024. It extends to every facet of digital content. And you may have seen OpenAI release Sora recently. And when you look at these videos, right, you can start to extrapolate how in one to two years, where the quality might head and the ability to truly alter society's perception of reality, it's going to be pervasive across the entire content ecosystem. So there may be a need for more tech accords, more far reaching agreements into the future. Okay, we'll leave it there for the moment. Jeffrey McGregor, CEO of TruePick, thanks so much for joining us on BBC News. Yes, thanks for having me.